Okay, so this is a computer I built for a client a couple of years ago. It's got a 500 gigabyte solid state drive in it, and they're wanting more space. He originally requested a two terabyte uh, solid state drive, and when I told him the price, uh, he changed his mind. At the moment, they're about $300 after tax. Um, so he opted for a two terabyte hard drive with a solid state drive cache in it, also known as uh, SSHDs. They're right around $100 right now for the two terabyte with the, the cache in it. Okay, let's see. Turn this sucker around and lay it down. Looks like I need to blow some dust out of it. The cooler here's pretty well encrusted. Um, so a solid or for a standard hard drive would probably go right there. Um, I think we're gonna just do that. Looks like I need to add a SATA cable and a SATA power cable. And it looks like, yeah, it's a modular case and he did not bring me the extra cable. So I'll do some kind of splitter, I suppose. I'm gonna go ahead and take this outside and blow the dust out of it. So this electric blower, um, you can uh, get it on Amazon for right around 70 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for it. Okay, so here's the two terabyte SSHD. It's a Seagate. Okay, so I'm going to put the SATA power and data connections towards the back. I kind of need to get this cable out of the way. Bring it through the front. So I'm taking off the data connection on the solid state drive so I can bring it around just to get it out of the way so I can add the drive. This just goes in. And it's got a little kind of a pull thing here that snaps in and secures it. Okay. So I'm in need of another SATA power connection. So I'm going to grab a SATA power splitter. And I also need a SATA data cable. There's a splitter. Okay, so I'm gonna disconnect the power going to the solid state drive. I'm gonna kind of bring this over there and I'll go ahead and reconnect the SSD's data cable. Okay, so all this does is it takes one SATA power connection and splits it into two. I'm going to take this down and plug it into the hard drive. And this other side is going to come back 
over this way. All right, I'm going to plug in a data cable to the new drive and bring that through so I can plug it into the motherboard. And on this motherboard, all of the SATA data connections are the same. On some motherboards, one will be different from another. Like maybe uh, two of them or three of them or four of them will uh, be on a separate chipset, but all these are just uh, part of the main Intel chipset. So then I'm taking the other side of the power and plugging it in for the solid state drive. So now we've got power going to both the solid state drive and the new SSHD and data cables going to each. We added a new one for the SSHD. Okay, um, let's go ahead and put the covers back on. See, that's the back side and that's the front. Right. So we need to plug in HDMI for video. monitor turned on. Okay, so he's got a picture on his desktop, so I'm just gonna hide that for the moment. So this is Windows 7. Um, in Windows 7, to get to disk management for is what we, uh, we need to, uh, to use to set up the drive the rest of the way, um, you click Start, and then I'm not gonna be able to show this because of the picture, but if you right click on computer, you go to manage. And that brings up disk management, computer management. And I just made it full screen, so everything's hidden. On Windows 10, you right click on start and go to disk management to get to disk management, which is right here. So when it detects that you've installed a new drive, it will come up and ask you if you want to initialize it. You do. Uh, the default on Windows 7 appears to be MBR. I think on Windows 10, it, the default's GPT, and GPT is really what you want. So I'm going to click that and OK. And he'd like the uh, the new drive to be the D drive. Um, in this case, uh, the CD-ROM drive is the D drive. So what I'm going to do is right-click just on the CD-ROM, go to Drive, Change Drive Letter and Paths, I'm going to click Change, change the D drive to the E drive, and click OK. And it will warn you that any programs you have installed that are expecting the, uh, the disk drive to be on this particular drive letter may not work, but that's OK. The uh, worst case scenario is that on that is you'd have to reinstall the program. Um, so I'll say yes. And that changes the DVD drive to the E drive. So now if I right click on just a blank spot on the two terabyte drive, go to new simple volume, next, next, the assigned drive letter uh, defaults to D and that's what we want. If you wanted to change to something else you could, but we're going to leave it on D since that's what we want. Next, the volume label, 
um, I'm going to change that to hard drive. You want to make sure you leave perform a quick format checked, otherwise it takes forever. Next and finish. And it'll format it, it just takes a few seconds usually. So that's the D drive and Windows will usually pop up a little thing here saying, hey, what do you want to do with this? You can click open folder to view files and it'll show as the D drive. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on computer here. I'm going to change the name of the C drive by right clicking on it and go into properties. I'm going to call it SSD. Okay, so now C drive is the SSD and the D drive is a hard drive. And that's how you add a new drive to an existing computer. Thanks for watching.